Hey, Ken. What's up, Ryu? You? you know, I think you're a fucking dick, right? Yeah. Well, I think we should settle this shit once and for all with a rap battle to the death. Okay. All right, uh, you guys may have heard a bit of an odd hello there. That's because we finally got the microphone working. My lights are off. I need to turn those on still. But uh, we are almost ready to go with this week's Corsair Cup. We just had to tweak the brackets ever so slightly. But uh, I think they've been changed for the better. Uh, how are you doing there, Zombie Grub? I'm okay. So, so I'm a little confused. So, what happened? Oh, wow! TLO, the monster host, dude, must have just been streaming. TLO, <laughs> thank you kindly. You know, I was gonna say let's find a match to cast, but I think without a doubt now we got we gotta cast TLO to like give his viewers just a little bit more of him. Who, where's uh, he on the bracket here? Actually, before I say that, on before the bottom I near Matiz. And round two plays Sake, and then that might not be too bad to be honest. Uh, what are the other options here, anyways? Got. Yeah, live sleep round two could be kind of interesting, but live and sleep didn't host us for 900 viewers, so I don't know. I think I think we gotta give some TLO love here. TBH. Um, good. West. Wow. Thanks for the host, man. Hello, viewers. But okay, so for those tuning in, you may be familiar with what we do every Monday. You may not. <coughs> Excuse me. Quick little too long, didn't read. We've actually been casting the Corsair Cup for 38 weeks now, if you can believe it. This is the 38th Cup in a row. It's funded by Corsair. They're really awesome people. And thank you to Corsair for making all that uh, happen. We are, uh, we have actually been blessed enough, I guess you could say, to see TLO, speak of the devil, play in the last couple of cups. Uh, Neeb actually showed up for one as well. It'll be interesting to see how today's bracket turns out. Um, but yeah, if this is gonna be the case, TLO versus Matisse will be the first matchup lined up. I'm actually just asking TLO right now if he's cool with it. I don't want to, you know, he'll be like, no, I hosted you because I don't want viewers or something weird. Like, you know, like you gotta play respect to a man who can host you. So uh, we'll, we'll figure out what's going on there in a moment. Uh, we also have, boom, the bot working, which is nice. I know we had some problems with that when the power went out yesterday in the middle, well, I guess the end of the cast for me, uh, it screwed up things with the bot. So I spent a good chunk of last night trying to get it to work. Oh, that sucks. What were we going to talk about before the host? Oh, what was wrong with my mic? That's right. Yeah, sorry. So, we had a bit of a late start. There were some issues. Yeah, so have you been seeing tweets about this that they are once again forcing you to take an update? Uh, no, upgrade? but I'm not um, looking forward to that. Yeah, so I hadn't really been paying attention, but then I realized that, like, for a couple of nights it was saying, like, update and shut down, you know, or the next time I turned it off. Instead so of eventually just it got shutting me. down. Yeah, eventually it got me. So I don't know exactly what they, like, was supposed to be in this update, but they changed some, like, quality of life things for the worse again. But that means that I guess they tried to find a driver for my mic when they weren't supposed to. It was supposed to find its own driver, and I had yeah. to, like, tell it to stop, basically, and replug it in. So at least I didn't have to, like, it wasn't too bad of a fix. Just Google how to fix it, so it, it worked out fine, but... The other thing that they changed, I guess, is that, uh, I don't know, like, apparently something about, like, the, um, the little tab thing, the Windows tab now looks different. Like, I, I really don't know, but people are complaining about it. So, yay! Well, I'm just glad that it's, uh, it's, oh, I see that, I see exactly what you mean, actually. <laughs> right away, I didn't notice uh, when it happened, I guess, but, um, okay. Tilo didn't say no, but he also completely avoided the question, so I'm gonna assume he doesn't have a problem with it. Uh, Matisse will try and get into the cast too, so uh, it should be Tilo versus Matisse. And if you guys have not seen, by the way, Zombie Grub, we will not for much longer have to worry about using the Base Tray TV Graphs mod, actually. I did see that, I retweeted it even. Yes! I'm very, very, very excited um, about this. So. For those who don't know, we use this graphs mod, and a, bar a big part of this is showing that income graph, right? Oh, I forgot to put the new logos on the overlay for our other sponsors. I'll get that fixed here in a sec. Um, uh, so the graphs things we integrated into the WCS mod, which is great, not just because it makes our life easier in terms of like not having to separate five or six different mods, but it also means that um, you might actually see this on the actual main WCS cast, something I've been hoping for for a while, because I think the graphs mod actually adds a ton 
for the broadcast. Not just in terms of like, because <laughs> it's ours, but it's like a nice TLDR of the last 10 minutes if you weren't paying too close attention to the income, because you're excited watching the battle, or maybe you're looking at the army supplies, or this, that, and the other. So I think it's really cool. The income advantage is one thing. I'll be very interested to see if Blizzard is going to incorporate other stats in there. I know for us, we contemplated showing things other than APM and other than army size, but again, it'll be a lot to do with the... Uh, I guess the prowess of the observer as well. Yeah, yeah. When I retweeted that, some guy tweeted at me, um, and maybe he didn't mean it in this way, but he never actually responded to my response tweet, but he was like, you know, quote unquote, like, how do we differentiate StarCraft II um, from other esports? And then, quote unquote, like, do everything, do the same thing everyone else is doing. And I was like, are you saying that having graphs is bad because other esports use graphs i don't know really by the way you, should, you can go um oh on the but he's only just joined Gosh. i i i'm with you on this like it's it's silly to say like oh there's an excellent tool in another game but to be a, a unique flower we should ignore it like that's wrong in my opinion so, uh, anyways, we're going to be getting into King Sejong Station. It is only a best of one. We have actually not had this many sign-ups in a while. We don't often have to dance around best of ones. Well, I also did not have the Twitch alerts thing set up properly, apparently. So, I would like to quickly give a big thank you to Reza Sedinia. I'm sorry if I'm saying the name wrong, but you just subbed with Twitch Prime, and you're an absolutely fantastic <sighs> person for it. Yeah, um, oh. and, uh, some frosh- oh, I gotta get the tough one. <laughs> no, not allowed. Not allowed, DLO. Absolutely not. You gotta go back. This is a throwback match to when you used to be a good race. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I love TLO. It get a sump frosh-in as well for the Twitch Prime. Yeah, and then, uh, Ivo Jovchev hit us up with the 12-month race. So if that qualifies you for a part two, my friend, make sure to send us a message here on Twitch. We'll get you verified and hopefully send you out one of these wonderful part twos ASAP. Uh, but <clears throat> whilst we were only in the game for but a second, I have to tell you, Zombie Up, I was immediately hit with, like, this crashing wave of calmness and relief, realizing that, you know, the StarCraft Observer interface is something I enjoy using. The camera doesn't make me want to kill myself. And for those who don't know what I'm yeah. talking about, Overwatch observing is a challenge and a half, to say the least. It is, yes. Even actually just observing on my own, like um, not making it look nice and fancy for the uh, the uh, the fans, I guess. Like, it's still a really big pain. I mean, of course, I had to in an emergency. Yesterday was, was fun though, like, you know, if you don't remember, or didn't even watch or whatever that we cast Overwatch yesterday. Um, besides Rifkin's power going out, actually things, I thought things went very well. Well, there's more to talk about that, of course, but for now we hop into this very first game of the day. Thank you, Corsair, for making all of this possible. Corsair Cup number 38, kicking off here in a best of one. In the bottom right, we got the one red Zerg player, Team Liquids, TLO. The top left, as the blue Zerg player, he is Matisse. Alright, well, Matisse is certainly, I would say, the challenger to the arena. He is on Euronics Gaming, so I'm hoping with a big brother teammate like Nurcio. He's picked up some strategy here and there. TLO's ZVZ is interesting to me, though. I actually think he's quite good at it, but he's also someone who can easily be shut down at the same time. It feels like once he gets the momentum rolling, he is unstoppable, but it's totally possible to get him with maybe not early pulls even, but just like slightly faster pushes. Maybe you throw in that plus one and catch him off guard. I don't know. Like he's he's not infallible, that's for sure, but his EVC has been looking really darn good lately. Uh, thank you to Srilo for the eight months. Eight months! That's what he says. Um, yeah, the... I mean, it's ZBZ with two pretty, like, TLO being the most recognizable player, of course, but Matisse having been in many tournaments and a pretty good player himself. I think in ZBZ, uh, anything surprising can happen. King Sejong is actually the one of the least surprising maps in that your, your overlords get to each other's naturals very quickly, so usually you have a decent amount of scouting. But in that way, it can also be deceiving, because there are the back rocks that you can break down and Ling Flood, certainly that's an all in that can be used. Uh, once in a while to surprise your opponent, and then generally because it gets to three bases, it can be a lot about the micro capabilities of each person, um, and and basically letting their their 
third base get up and their opponents not so much. We'll see what type of game I guess these guys are going to play. Actually, that I'm trying to remember for the life of me who it was we cast that one time that did do the back rocks, right? Because like, that big ling all in, it was super cool because it got it well. off guard. <laughs> all I remember is Jadong doing it to come back in a game that he was definitely losing in. Because King Sejong was in the map pool like two years ago. Oh, it feels old, man. Yeah, uh, it is pretty old. So, uh, third bases are coming down right now, which is kind of expected. Just It's a question of more of who's going to be able to deny the other. Actually, so far, well, TLO not getting speed. Talking on the bases for a minute, though, is kind of cool, because TLO has been one to just skip the natural and go straight to the third, even in a ZVZ, taking risks, of course, most notably at Home Story Cup, but in other matches, too. To have just gone and played this out normally is not a good versus a bad thing, but it's just interesting to see he didn't take that path. Mm. Okay, so he does start his speed, but it's almost 70 gas late. Uh, I guess he does start his bailing this like immediately after, so the 40 second difference of his speed might not be such a big deal, because well, his bailings will basically be at the same time. So that's true about the bailings. What's, what's going to be interesting about the lings versus the speed element of this is the fact that TLO is squeezing out an extra queen, and if that's the cost of leaving drones on minerals instead of getting gas that early, that could be a huge benefit in this situation, especially if it ends up being on the defense. Three queens to focus fire down bailings is a lot more effective than two, plus that extra transfuse goes a long way. That's true. That could be exactly why he did it. I think it's a little tricky just because the third base on King Sejong is a little far away. Like, your creeps doesn't get there immediately. So, getting that third base and the creep spread spread a little faster, I guess, all kind of comes together. Hopefully, by the time your opponent has decided if they're going to try and deny your third base or not. Because, of course, neither of them have to do that. And, in fact, neither of them are going to do that. They're actually going to be going for Roche Warns each. So... Uh, I don't think canceling speed is like, I mean, it, it could happen for TLO as he realizes it does go to Roach versus Roach game, but I think speed is actually very useful to have in general. I just prefer the people who get it. <clears throat> well, it could certainly have made the difference of this scout or not. Ducks up to the main now with it barely finishing in time. He's going to see that Bailey Ness. He's going to see that layer start. Now, unless this is a really sick fake out of Matisse, that was just the greatest timing on the scout for TLO. I uh, got to see the Roach Warrior. got to see the two gases. got to see that layer gets Ooh. canceled. It was a fake! Now Matisse might swap it up and go for a giant all-in, and this is so dangerous for TLO. He does have more lings on the way, and he's looking to do a bit of damage, but he's just set down seven drones in his own layer, thinking, you know, it's a little bit more safe than it really is. Yeah, this will be a big surprise. I mean, the good news is it's going to be slow roaches, so they're going to show themselves underneath the Overlord fairly, uh, fairly soon, as they're popping out right now, and he'll try and respond. I mean, TLO does have his own roach warrant. He didn't push that off. Sometimes you do that in, like, really passive uh, macro-oriented games. So he'll be able to build as many roaches as he would, would like, basically. Um, so he might be a bit later to the Larva Pop Roach. Like, he, does, he did make so many drones before this. But, of course, he'll have Defender's Advantage going on his side. Of Queens, he'll have maybe better defensive setup. And Matisse still has a long way to go to get his own reinforcements around this map. It's still a fairly long one. Well, Tilo yeah, recognizing an appropriate threat does have army in play up 20 something drones All he has to do is hold on and he's gonna be in a great spot There's a lot of bailings He's got to make sure to take care of and not let slip by go straight to that mineral line kind of what's happening right now Drones getting pulled away whoa, make whoa, sure whoa. this doesn't get too crazy with they're stacked up Oh things get real bad for Tilo real quick, but he manages to survive with six only being what's dead so far But now the roaches need to be dealt with and while the drones might be safe for the time being if he loses this fight He's going to lose the war. He knows it too. So Unfortunately, with the drones being so low, he can't even really pull them into the fight like he would normally love to in this situation. He's going to go for it, but it's going to cost him a lot of his drones. Well, that was a mistake, letting all those drones stack up on the gas, guys. We're just trying to keep them safe, and inadvertently just committing you know, even more drone to dying. He's still up in drones, though. His lair did finish, I think. Yeah, he didn't cancel that. Well... The layer, I think, for him more comfortably would have gone towards the Mutas, but he actually holds on really well with the Roaches, and he's still notably up a significant amount of drones. We just saw Matisse pump out a huge wave to catch up, but, I mean, TLO's had these out. They've been mining fairly consistently, you know, getting pulled off, of course, to stay alive and everything. But, damn, like, you're right. If those hadn't stacked, this may not have been the crazy situation, and TLO might still even have, like, a 10-worker lead. Yeah, he certainly have a bigger one, but I still will put him in an okay position. I mean, he's still up in workers. He already uh, invested into the lairs and already done, so he can get roach speed. 
as well as plus one, because he also invested into an illusion chamber already. But he's actually trying to counter a little bit, at least force Matisse not to completely outdrone him. And he's going to be going for a Spire and a fourth base pretty quickly. That might just be because of his ex excess minerals. Okay, I was, I was wondering about the Spire. I mean, I, I kind of assumed this was going to be the case the second he threw down that layer in the first place. But it was that question of like, okay, did he have to commit to too much? Does he have so many roaches that he'd like to keep committing to them? But... I really like Spire play. I, if I, I really like Spire play that doesn't involve a commitment of Mutalisks. When, especially on King Sejong Station, you get like maybe six to eight out. They can do some nice harass, they clean up all the overlords on the map. And it's also not so much of an investment that you can still play any direction of the game you want. Well, the Overseer gets a great scout in Matisse's base and sees they don't have to worry about any counter uh, Spire play. He does see the Evolution Tripper wiggling and jiggling as well as the Roach Warren researching that Roach speed. He does have to worry about, of course, Matisse attacking him while his fire is finishing up. It doesn't really look like that's a plan for Matisse here. He does send Ling to the third base and gets a couple more drone kills. Yeah, Gillo losing about five or so for this. Queen almost goes down. Queen does go down. Nice snipe there out of Matisse. Uh, quick shot, by the way, you printer hands heads up for 22 months a few moments ago. Just been really <laughs> focused on the action of the game. For once, am I right? Uh, that was a really cool fight and really good follow-up. Uh, we also have Blasted101 who just, I guess, renewed his sub with a Twitch Prime sub. 22 months in a row. Nice. Two more months to our two year, he says, with a heart. But okay. Uh, Ravagers are certainly going to be able to dive to that back line and pick off the Rav... Or sorry, excuse me. Mutalisks will be able to dive to the back line and pick off the Ravagers, but... But these actually doesn't have that many Ravagers to pick off, and unfortunately with all the Roaches being what they are, unless they're caught in the middle of the map, it's going to be really hard to actually utilize them. Uh, TLO has, by the way, not been shy about going out of his way to shut down all the Overlords. He's trying to remove as much vision from the map as possible. It's a little bit slow with two, on. but... Sure. <laughs> Could be going on for a long, uh, long time actually. Matisse is already on his way to Hydralisk. He isn't going to be too uh, surprised by these Mutalisk. I mean, yeah, losing a couple of Overlords sucks, losing his vision sucks, but he should be able to get to his own decent army. Tila with the fourth base already down is a little concerning because Matisse looks like he's going to lose his. Uh, but Tielo sending out his roaches like this, I think that Matisse will know. I mean, it, usually this is what happens anyway, but now I'll definitely know that Tielo is not investing too much into. The needle is not going like 20, 30 deep and going oh. back into roaches. Meanwhile, as Matisse done something interesting, uh, for a brief moment, started the Lurker Den. I guess he said he wants the upgrades for the anti air first, which is probably a better choice, to be honest. But if he does instead follow up afterwards with a Lurker Den, that'll be certainly one way to deal with the roaches and the banes on the ground. But same problems are just generally going to present themselves. Without a proper infestation pit or something to really shut down the mutas, it's going to be hard to catch the clump. Mm hmm. Well, it's Tilo going for the Infestation Pit first. Let's we'll see if that's going to be trying to get him up to a hive, or if he's actually going to include uh, Infestors into his own army. Mm. I love those double spores, by the way. I did a great job of pushing Tilo back. Uh, it's worth noting, Tilo is behind quite a bit on the upgrades coming into this fight. He will finish up one as, to be matching his opponent for ranged weapons, but that's going to be a big plus two head start for Matisse. And if Matisse can buy enough time to get that upgrade, with the amount of Hydras, much less Roaches he has, that's going to be huge. Um, and he already, to the main. He's already maxed out, and yeah, he has some army supply that's in these mutas that aren't really too helpful with the main engagements. And it's a little scary. Uh, he can't push up into a concave of Roach and Hydras, though, so he will back off. But actually, Matisse pushing in here, he might have the better tech than Hydralis, but sometimes oh, oh, an Gilo. overwhelming amount of Gilo. Roaches and Ravagers can actually take on a Roach Hydra army. All right, so TLO just got caught looking in another place at the wrong time, so lost the mutas for it. But it's funny you brought up the army supply. It's actually the what makes that bank so much more impressive. Like, he seems to be able to remax whatever he'd like if he loses the army. Obviously, he doesn't want to lose it unfavorably. Pulls him back to that uh, hatchery. Unfortunately, walks into some of those corrosive vials. Takes some pretty nasty hits, but his army supply remains strong behind this. The mutas coming for a bit of a flank. Hydra's a bit late to the party, so the anti-air is a bit slow, and TLO is just walking over Matisse. This is a one-sided fight, to say the least. Yeah, that went really nicely for TLO. And now Mutas even came back to really help in the last couple of seconds of the engagement by taking out all of the, uh, like, four or five Hydralis in the back. So TLO looking very good in this game, actually looking to be in a winning position. He does advance himself towards Hive and continue upgrading as well. 
to only be yeah. shortly behind the plus two of Matisse. And I think Matisse knows that he's... Like, once you have trouble getting uh, above 100 supply, you're in a pretty bad spot in a game. Especially if you were unable to deal economic damage to your opponent. You know, I thought with his initial attack, too, it, you know, it starts to cancel the layer, try and catch TLO off guard. There's a lot of things Matisse was doing that looks like it should have won in the game or should have gotten massive leads. And I think against the majority of Zerg players out there, it may have, but the scariest thing about TLO is really his brain when it comes down to it. Like, he's smart enough to look at those gas times, to see that Roach Warren, to see it wiggling and jiggling, and think, like, okay, that layer, 50 50 on that. Takes a chance, goes for more army, pays off at the end of the day. Mm. Well, 50 is supply. Purely an army. Matisse did try and get, I guess, a better economy going as his fourth base finished up. But uh, and, you know, Matisse had also split late. his army, so TLO, who had split his, should have been fighting evenly, but natural base gets sniped off. He backs away, moves on to the fourth base. That's going to get sniped off, and he's going to walk away, and this is where Matisse might end up walking away from the game. This is just way too much damage. Two hatcheries like this so quickly and in such quick succession. GG is called. Well, not a bad plan to go for a trick all-in. Luckily, TLO was prepared. And now we go on to the next series. Illusions. I assume we're going to be following TLO? Yes, and he goes up against Sake next for a PVZ, which will be interesting. Uh, a lot of other really good matchups going on, guys. And I, some of you guys here, TLO fans, I will let you know that we'll not be following TLO necessarily 100% of the day. But I figured aptly done for this host to kick off the stream, we would give you guys a little bit of TLO action to begin with. So there's your best of one. We got a best of three coming up next. Then we'll see where we're at in the brackets and perhaps bounce around. However, we're going to go to commercial break before then. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you in a few minutes.